it's not even seven o'clock in the morning. It's Friday, and uh, a queue is formed outside Asda. I know from experience, ordinarily, I was going to be nobody here. These have been the scenes where I live in Froome in Somerset, where I'm going to be for the foreseeable future. It's quite a sight, but this doesn't look like panic buying to me. It looks like pretty unpanicked people who need food. We actually made the first Anywhere But Westminster film here 10 years ago at the dawn of austerity. Welcome to my adopted hometown of Froome in Somerset. It's a town with a population of around 25,000 and a really vibrant, interesting local atmosphere, which is part of the reason I moved here. But now, the cafe I go to most mornings has closed. You're sitting out here outside your life's work and it's shuttered up. Yeah, don't make me cry, John. Yeah, definitely. Right? I'm not trying to, no, but... No, I know you're not. I've cried over the last 72 hours far too much. At the end of the day, that's money. Um, lives are... I will. See you soon, Jude. Thanks again. Bye. Right, now strictly following the rules on physical distancing. I'm on my way to Froom Town Hall, which is the HQ of our food bank, Fair Froom. How's it going? Supplies are not coming in like they used to be. The volunteers that normally run the food bank, a lot of those are older. People who actually donate food are those people who are the poorest people. Yeah, because they've been there. The people we deal with aren't able to panic buy because they haven't got any money. And there's more and more of them because as we're seeing day, daily, you know, people now are coming to us and saying, I've just lost my job, I've got no more hours, I've been on zero hour contracts, I haven't got anything. How many hours are you putting in as a volunteer at the moment? Um, we're just doing what we can. I mean, it's actually bringing community together. They're talking about how they can support one another. And I think that's, that's the thing that we need to emphasize about bringing people together, because there's nothing else. We might need that for the future as well. Hello. What's the matter with that? It's good. Is that fine as an intro? Great, I love yeah. the supermarket. You've got to give me props here, the digital watch and everything, I'm having it. Well, you've learned from me, haven't you? I've taught you oh, 10 years. Oh, here we go. <laughs> That's John, the producer and other half of Anywhere But Westminster. He's stuck in South London, and I'll hand over to him. Schools across the UK until further notice. Daddy! Is that your tiger book? Yeah, and you can move the tiger side to side and up and down. I'm breaking out the emotional music here because that's definitely how we all felt. Contacted Lersham Asta. They're at six this morning. I've got bags naked. under my eyes. So I've been like that since quarter to four. So um, what someone said, doing? "Why have they got so much toilet roll?" We're well, getting dirty looks for carrying all this. We was getting dirty looks, yeah. and it was like I felt bad that I've got all these bags of toilet roll, but they're actually for families. They're not for yeah. me. Yeah. That's Claudine, who looks after the vulnerable families at the school. She's been urgently putting together food boxes for the families that are going to need help. Did you spring into action pretty quick on it? When did you realise that this was going to be um, needed? Last week I thought I'd better do something quickly. I think a few schools I'm going to put some recipes in the bags, just of what people can do with just um, water or milk and flour. And a lot of the families that have come in and said bye, they've been so tearful. I think a lot of people who are on universal credits who are doing part-time work, they are really worried. They're worried about their rent, then it's paying the bills, and then depression kicks in. And I also think um, mental health will probably start to unfold a bit more with a lot of people. We would need to look at when kids start coming back of what they've had to go through. So. I'm hoping we'll be able to get through and everyone can kind of keep strong and um, just keep going, really. And how do you feel? How do I feel? About it. I had to keep my distance and film on the zoom lens. But actually all I wanted to do was give her a hug. Elbows. Elbow slugs. Elbow yeah. slugs. Elbow slugs. And then blowing, blowing kisses and catching them. She's a year six teacher. I'm a year four teacher. And I think it's been a real test of times. It's been something you couldn't even write. It's been something completely mind boggling for us. And I think at times during the day, you know, we've been really positive children because you should do, but yeah. then there's been dips where we're like, ugh. <laughs> so for primary school to try and understand it and comprehend it, it's so hard. 
but regardless. This woman this is woman. incredible. Like, what she has done here, what she has done. It's not just about this, it's about what Claudine has done throughout her whole year. This is this is just a glimpse into how hard and, and how passionate Claudine And the way she's just thought went. about these and ideas as well, not even probably following something, just thinking, actually, this needs to be done, let's just do And we it. really appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you, I appreciate everyone too, so, you know. But it's start crying now. Yeah. So get some tissue. <laughs> you're away, you know, too. <laughs> Quite uplifting as well, though. Not uplifting, but it's emotional watching it. You feel moved. Yeah. And hopefully you feel moved by the Froome stuff, so... Normally at this stage of a film, we video some Vox Pops and perhaps a busker on the high street, which is why we asked for your help. And we eventually found a virtual busker doing a coronavirus-themed song. We're going into the city centre in Norwich to see what's going on. It's been about four hours since Boris Johnson's ordered all bars, pubs and clubs to close. 10 o'clock, Friday night. We've got about an hour's worth of drinking left. As you can see, barely a person, not a single soul in sight. Right, so we're now outside, as I say. A um, little walk that I do um, just to keep me a bit sane, really. The amazing array of video anywhere but Westminster viewers have sent in really captures what's going on across the country. And what's most striking is the amount of footage showing people getting together to try and deliver some of what their communities need. These the freegan boxes. If you order them online from the Real Junk Food Project, they will deliver a box of uh, food that would normally go into landfill. Hi, my name's Gareth, I'm 54, I live in Cardiff and I have been working part-time as a delivery rider while I got my business started. We are the people who deliver your parcels. We cut your hair, we clean your homes, we bring you meals when it's cold and wet and you can't be bothered to cook. Are you really going to turn your backs on us? Tomorrow is a big day for us, I'm just going to turn the camera around because it's our little boy's birthday, he's turning five, um, so you can see and there's some balloons and cards and, and bits here and we will be having a party. <coughs> Gloves and all. person in my household to now come down with the virus. Checked my husband's temperature at 8 o'clock and he was 36 degrees. An hour later I heard thud and I ran downstairs and he had passed out, knocked himself out in the toilet, smashed his nose. They said that he had been in normal times and those were so badly broken that he would have been sent for surgery. That wasn't going to happen, obviously. Currently, I am in the unfortunate position of having relapsed into heroin use about a week ago. I would usually um, be able to access uh, a script of subutext. The only clinic that can prescribe me is closed for seven days. Um, I am self-medicating with Jacodamol and some small amounts of Valium. Um, I'm kind of feeling okay right now. Hello, it's Tudor Evans, leader of the Plymouth City Council here, trying to keep you safe. Uh, but we're doing it from a safe distance. Am I still hanging my washing out? Yes. Am I still loading the dishwasher? Yes. Am I still shaking hands with my neighbours? No. Am I still going to Argos to get items to furnish flats for care leavers? Yes. Yes. Am I still drinking wine? Well, only at weekends and in the evenings when I finish work. Alexa. Play BBC Radio 4. Here's Radio 4. The headlines this morning. The most stringent and far-reaching restrictions on people's lives in the UK in modern times are beginning to try to curb the spread of the coronavirus. All over Britain, mutual aid groups are now springing up. 
We thought we'd go back to someone who was doing real on the ground mutual aid long before this crisis. We've got four different collection points. Inside the back of this van, there's boxes and crates. Jim Slaven co-runs Helping Hands in Edinburgh, an amazing grassroots organisation who've been providing food and support to people for years. Sorry, Jim. Sorry, no problem. I can't get the scene to record. I'm just going to have to film it off the screen. Uh, how's it going, Jim? That's the question. Busy, chaotic. We've been delivering hundreds of survival packs for people. We're working with local businesses, so if it's bars, restaurants, I'll be forced to close. We're working with them to try and get the food out of their kitchens and get into the communities. You depend on volunteers, right, in large number? We're all volunteers. How does that work in, in the midst of so-called lockdown? We've had to refocus our energies to make sure it's much more localised. Previously, in the last week, we've had a large-scale Teams of volunteers going right across the city with vans doing that, that's obviously not possible. So what we're saying to volunteers is, look, if you can't help everyone, help one person. So look after your elderly neighbour, look after the family down the road that you know are struggling, make sure that they're the priority in the interim until this lockdown's lifted, and then we can look and see what the terrain is like. And then we can maybe start asking some questions. Why is it the politicians that live in our communities like? Why should we be voting for them? Who cares if we're saying we're putting billions in this and billions into that? Walk around the corner, like, everything's closed, they're gone. The only people left here are us and our neighbours, and we're in this together, like. God. There's a real sort of, we're finally on our own kind of feeling. I, I mean, I think that's, and if, if that's how we're feeling in housing schemes in Edinburgh, which, as I say, is a very wealthy city, an economic hub, then I can only imagine that that's amplified in some of the other parts of the country. Forget charity, forget missionaries. There's no saviours here, it's down to us. It doesn't dilute my sort of faith in um, in community solidarity and action and all that, quite the reverse, but it's just really sobering that that's, that's all there is now. But even here in Somerset, it feels a bit like that, do you know what I mean? I mean, I live in a, a, I live in a, a pretty nice place, notwithstanding the fact it's got high levels of deprivation and need in certain parts of town, but I haven't seen a, I haven't seen a policeman here in a year and a half, two years, you know? My county council not that long ago, it was on the verge of bankruptcy. But, you know, for as long as there are people like Jim around and Fair Froom and Claudine, the woman at your school, you know, at least some of that vacuum is filled. But I'm not sure all these analogies with the war really work because the state was a sort of central presence then. But we've had 10 years of the state being attacked and hacked back, you know, and now we're, now we're reaping the effects of it all. I just thank God for people, you know. Right, it's time for another Anywhere But Westminster call out. First of all, we just want to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone who sent us video, a great deal of which is used in the film. You've just seen it's brilliant stuff, so thank you. Please keep it coming in uh, within the, the confines of physical distancing rules and self-isolation. If you're in the midst of all that, please carry on sending video that gives us a sense of this crisis, how you're living through it, how you're coping with it, the issues that you face. Um, on top of that, we're also after some more specific stuff now. The next film, with any luck, is going to be about the so-called gig economy. Maybe you're a delivery driver or a courier. Maybe you're self-employed, but you're not really, and you're uncertain of your position in the midst of all this. We'd like to hear from you. Again, it's really important uh, that you stay within the bounds of the physical distancing rules. We want to hear your opinions, your view of things, what you've got to say, but also turn the camera around. Give us a flavour of your immediate surroundings, the world as you see it. Um, the email address is shown. You can follow some of the tips that are under this video. And that's the plan. This series continues.